Chapter 10, Property, Plant, and Equipment. Our learning objectives here are to define the characteristics of a plant asset, identify the cost in acquiring that plant asset, and then look at ways in which we depreciate that plant asset. To begin with, the plant asset has to be tangible, has to have useful life greater than one year, and is used in the business to earn revenue rather than being held for resale. Plant assets are a form of prepaid expenses, and when we account for them, there are four things or four stages. First of all, we must account for the acquiring of that asset. Then we must account for how we allocate the cost of that asset over its useful life. And then if there are any subsequent expenditures to increase the life of that asset, we must account for that. And finally, how do we get rid of that asset? Now initially recording the asset here, we have the purchase price, but the asset costs also include all normal, reasonable, and necessary expenditures to obtain that asset, get it to your plant, and get it ready for use. Now for land, of course we include the purchase price of land, but there's also real estate commissions, title search, title transfer fees, insurance premiums. If we had to clear the land, the cost of survey in the land, all of those would be part of the cost of land. Now land is considered to have unlimited life and therefore is not depreciable. Land improvements, however, such as driveways, landscaping, parking, slots, fences, these have limited lives and they are depreciable. Now, how do I depreciate that? Well, you see, again, this asset will provide or help us earn revenue for more than one accounting period. So we must allocate the cost of that asset to each of those accounting periods in which it's contributed. To do that, we must take into consideration the cost of the asset. That's the total cost. I mean, we talked about all other uh, costs that may be part of that asset. We then must estimate how much would the asset be worth at the end of its useful life. Then we say, okay, how long is that useful life? How many years will it help us earn revenue? For example, we're going to do it the straight line way. We say, okay, look, this company bought this asset for 54000 It has a salvage value of 4 and a useful life of 10 So therefore, its usefulness to us is worth 50000 And it's useful for each year for over the next 10 years. So therefore, the depreciation that we're going to recognize every year, and we have a depreciation expense, 5000 these are adjusting entries, remember? and accumulated depreciation, 5,000, and a period adjusting interest. That's how we do it under straight line. A more popular way is double declining balance. This recognizes more uh, depreciation in the early years of the asset's life and less in the later. The assumption here is this, this asset helps us to provide revenue uh, has greater ability to help us provide revenue in its early years than its later years. Double declining simply means we look at the straight line rate, say 10 years, and we say divide that into 100, which is 10, and we multiply by 2. So we're going to take 20%. Now we take 20% on the total cost. So first year, 20% on 54000 And my book value at the end of that year is 432. Then next year, 20% on 432, 8,640. My book value at the end of the second year is 34,560. Then I take 20% of that on down to the last year where we just take enough basically to get down to the salvage value of 4,000. And so then each year we write depreciation expense, debit, 10,008, credit accumulate the following year. Depreciation expense debit 8640 credit accumulated depreciation. And that's how we record and allocate the cost of an asset over the years of its useful life.